The Gospel according to John is the result of the initiation shown in the middle of the book. This discovery invites a new hearing, this time from the beginning. The whole prologue speaks in the rhythmical varying repetition of a mantram, and in it the author is already connecting with John. A man came into being, sent from God, whose name is John. By meditating on the origin and mission of John, Lazarus is preparing to connect with him in his mystical death. He came for witness, to bear witness of the light, that through him all might believe. As mentioned in the opening presentation, this means developing a higher cognitive faculty. That is, Lazarus intends to participate in John's seership. In chapter 18, we saw a hint that Lazarus belonged to the leading circles in Jerusalem. This matches hints in the other Gospels and in the Golden Legend. Accordingly, he stands within the inquiry into the entelechy of the Baptist. This scene obviously plays a couple of years before Lazarus dies. Next, by bearing witness to the incarnation of Christ in Jesus, John helps to form the circle of disciples he is already becoming their inspiring spirit. This grows gradually in cyclical time, as shown by the repeated formula on the next day. That is, Lazarus is still describing events primarily from the point of view of ordinary consciousness. Then comes a different formula. And on the third day, there was a wedding. There is cyclical time, Kronos, and there is the right time, Kairos. Thrice on the next day, that makes five. Materialistically, the wedding at Cana should be on at least the fifth day, not counting the time for the journey. Evidently, it occurs outside of the regular pattern of time. The narrator shifts to a different plane. The third day is an occult expression, ancient initiation culminated on the third day in the encounter of the neophyte with Christ. Quiz for Bible experts. Is there any mention of the fourth day in this book? Spoiler alert. 
The fourth day is when Lazarus returns to his body. That means most of the first half of the book is the experience of Lazarus on the third day of his initiation, namely the panorama of the life of Christ in Jesus from the wedding at Cana to the festival of the renewal of the temple. For this part, John is invoked as witness because he permeated Lazarus in death, mediating these images during his initiation. Here, the mother of Jesus mediates the transubstantiation. It was on the third day that the neophyte saw his body from without. The body appears in astral vision as the mother of the I Am. The end of the mission of alcohol and the generation of warmth from clear water indicates how the new consciousness is beginning to change Lazarus's bloodstream. A further esoteric image of the body is the temple. The encounter with Christ purifies it. All these things are happening to Lazarus in the tomb. In the middle of the experience of the third day stands the feeding of the five thousand. After these things, Jesus passed beyond the Sea of Tiberias in Galilee. It occurs in the beyond. A great host was following him because they had beheld the signs in what he did for the ailing. And Jesus ascended the mountain, leading the disciples to a higher state of consciousness. There he sat with his disciples. The Paschal sacrifice was near, the festival of the Judeans. Jesus, lifting his eyes and beholding a great host striving toward him, says to Philip, Whence shall we buy bread so that these may eat? Lifting his eyes implies not just observation, but contact with specific forces and beings. If you picture the scene precisely, you see that he is on the mountain top, looking upward. That is, the people he sees are still in the heavenly worlds, striving toward the earth. Our higher being requires nourishment.
one of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, says to him, A child is here, with five barley loaves and two little fishes. But what is that for so many? The child is newly born in the spiritual world, which is to say, he has just died. All four evangelists link the feeding of the five thousand to the death of John. Andrew, who finds the child, was introduced in the first chapter as a disciple of John. The imagination of the child also means that John, this human soul of the very greatest antiquity, is made young in the transformative presence of Christ. His next appearances on earth will be of harmonious youth. Lazarus can portray this change because he joined him on the third day. By merging with John, Lazarus receives the star nourishment as higher life forces overflowing in the twelve-fold archetype of his physical form. In the ancient initiation, a circle of twelve hierophants maintained the body during its death state. Later, Jesus himself, on the eve of his own death, will entrust his body to a circle of twelve. Toward the end of the imagination tableau lived through by Lazarus, on the third day of his death state, sayings such as these are spoken by Christ. The I Am and the Father are one. The Christ-imbued I generates the transformed physical body known as Spirit Man, or here, Father. The imagination of the Father runs throughout the whole book, but here it is especially direct, as Lazarus's body receives the germ of spiritualization. The third day, began with the imagination of the earthly body as the mother. Now the body is becoming heavenly. And you are gods. Lazarus attains immortal life. The initiation leads to communion with the gods. All the other images of the third day likewise illustrate what Lazarus is experiencing. The birth in the higher world, the sacrifice of the serpent, the wellspring of living water, the walking on the sea, the bodily and karmic healings, and then the hearing of the voice of the beautiful shepherd who guards the threshold, leading inward 
and outward. This voice will then call Lazarus forth from the tomb. 